Cancer, welcome to your February 2018 single and ready to mingle love reading. And um, I am using my new deck, the Wild Unknown Tarot. And um, I was just reading one of my comments and somebody said they, they didn't like it because it didn't correspond with the meanings of the cards. And I totally understand that. Uh, but when I've kind of like thought about some of the cards, I, I, I do think that it does connect with it. It's just that you have to think for a moment. But the other thing is that I can connect with cards just based on the beautiful um, illustrations. So I, I have to kind of break myself out, you know, get myself out of a rut. I have Taurus rising, so I tend to repeat myself, do things over and over again. And um, these, these are the cards I usually use, the Morgan Greer deck. And I love these cards because they're so bright and they are as expressive of what the meaning of the card is. And I'm going to continue to use them, but I do want to sometimes bring in some new blood. I mean, I think that's uh, a good thing. So hopefully you can appreciate this uh, slight diversion of my path. And um, <clears throat> we'll take it from here. And this is going to be, I, I devised a uh, different type of spread. So I will be letting you know what the meat, you know, the positions are after I've... Uh, laid out the cards. It has a, you know, w one of the things about this, this is like pen and ink drawings, and they have kind of like a gothic, a scorpionic um, vibe to them. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, but they do have colors, and that's what I like. I don't like when decks have like the same background. And you can say that a lot of these cards seem to have a dark background, but you know, look at this. I mean, that's very, um, they're, they're different, but I like, I do like the delicacy of the, the drawings, you know, I just think it's neat. And I even like the back of these, you know, I don't know. Okay. Hmm. And then the outcome is going to be this one. Let's see. Okay. I'm five of swords. I'm going to pick a, a, an additional card. Okay. Another pendulum. Okay, that's it. All right. <clears throat> now this is um, for people who are looking for new relationships. So just to reiterate this. It's not a relationship reading. So this card represents the central challenge uh, for you attracting a new relationship into your life. Uh, now that I'm getting used to this, I was like uh, thinking these were ten of swords and I, I hope that in the first readings I did that I actually characterized the cards correctly because this is actually the ten of wands. And they look like branches. I think that's what they're supposed to be. But the Ten of Wands is a card of feeling um, burdened by your situation. So in this could be like in another area of your life. You could be taking care of a, an elderly parent. You could be, and maybe you're working also, and you have a lot on your plate, you know. Uh, this is the card where they say, watch out for burnout, because the person may be taking on more than they can bear. And how does that relate to relationship? Well, this is something that cancers, uh, I think, have to really curb their tendency towards, which is becoming, you know... It's funny, cancer is a sign of the mother, but you put an S in front of that, it's smothering. Why do cancers smother? Cancers smother because of that nurturing instinct gone awry. Okay, so a cancer person is caring. They're a water sign. They want to help people, but they have emotional needs that sometimes 
And, and this could be being stuck in the past, uh, not getting their emotional needs met, having a traumatic experience like losing a parent early. And this can definitely be a father with water signs. The father can, can somehow do a disappearing act, either through death or abandonment. And they are, you know, let's, we're going to, I'm going to put a gender, let's say a female cancer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Has some of those issues swirling around in their past. And when they get involved in a relationship, those don't go away. They only get transferred to that person. So that, that's a roundabout way of saying, look at the areas when you, when you're trying to, uh, formulate, form a relationship with somebody. Do you just start getting your claws in very early on and taking on the responsibility for the relationship when it should be a balanced situation? The other thing too is if you have these other things going on in your life, you may feel like you don't have time for a relationship. And I would say in that, in that scenario, that you have to be realistic about your life. You can only do so much. You're only one person. You can't spread yourself too thin. So um, that could, those could be kind of like why it's hard for you to meet someone. And one of the things that you can do is ask yourself, if I really, really want a life partner, am I willing to rearrange my life so that I have time for a social life? Because if, I, if I'm not willing to change my life, then nothing is going to change. And I have no right to whine about it because I'm not um, doing anything. Uh, I'm just expecting that magically, uh, even though I, 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 I'm burning my candle at both ends and I'm, I'm working and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a working parent and blah, 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 that I'm supposed to also be ready for a relationship. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. Um, in the past position, we do have the tower. So this is kind of what I was talking about of traumatic, surprising events. And it could be the very distant past. This is your history. And so there may be something in your history that relates to a, sh a shocking event. And so now you're trying to ensure that you never are surprised again by life, that you are on top of everything. And it leads to uh, wearing yourself down because you can't, you can't prevent uh, anything from happening. Um, I mean, I'm talking about these faded events. And I was just watching some wonderful astrologers on YouTube talking like Lada and... Um, talking about uh, uh, the eclipses. And really, one of the things that I get from these, um, from lectures like hers, is the idea of these faded events, that it's not just the garden variety, new moon or full moon. By the way, uh, Cancer, you are having your own uh, solar eclipse in the summer in, on July, well, let me just say for the Australian people, uh, on July 12th. And this will be uh, at 20 degrees of Cancer. So if you have your sun around those degrees, that could be, you know, kind of a tower situation too. Although I, I think that solar eclipses are much more of uh, this, it's not so much shocking as very um, life affirming in a lot of ways, okay? So anyway, the point that I'm trying to make <laughs> with all of this is that you have to let go of the past and you have to realize that you can't control everything. You're a cardinal sign. You may be trying to control uh, how you meet somebody, all those things. I need to find somebody. No, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. It'll actually come into your life in a very um, organic way. So don't try too hard with the Ten of Wands. And don't be a, a codependent person. That's another thing that I'd say about the Ten of Wands. Um, don't, um, I, that's what I meant, is that some people, they just try to 
fix everything. They get involved in relationships. And it's, and I think a lot of those uh, situations where you're trying to take on all this responsibility, it's because you want that control, maybe deep down inside. You want to be the one in control. So you uh, go around and, and find people that maybe are not fully functional so that you can control them. But I'll tell you, a cancer person isn't going to take that very long uh, if somebody is not pulling their weight because you're just too security-minded. You're not going to allow yourself to get pulled down too far. So I don't have, I have faith in you about that. <clears throat> okay, how do you heal? How do you heal from these tendencies? This is a card connected to the Knight of Swords, okay? And the Knight of Swords, it's funny that they use this, I guess this is an owl, but it's, um, <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, the Knight of Swords can actually be a lawyer. So for some people, if, um, if you are still uh, connected to somebody legally, maybe you're, uh, the divorce hasn't gone through, but you're looking, you know, maybe you tuned in to me because you, you want new love in your life, but you haven't actually gotten a divorce. That might be your message. For other people, it's about speaking up and being um, very vocal about your needs. Unfortunately, some people are very uh, reluctant to express themselves within relationships and be their true selves because they're afraid of the person leaving. But you have to do it. You don't have a choice. You have to let people know where you stand. And the, the Knight of Swords is like you're not, you're cutting through all of the crap and you're just plainly uh, being honest about what it is, what your needs are. And with cancer, I sense a lot of passive aggressive behavior, a lot of um, manipulative behavior, which is, you know, guilting people, uh, you know, there's nobody better than a cancer to guilt people into doing things and just um, presenting themselves as the victim and things like that, the martyr. Um, those kinds of things are not helpful, mature, emo emotionally mature ways of handling things. And you notice that this is swords energy. So it's about detachment too. That's one of the key things. As a water sign, you're very subjective and you see the world through your conditioned lens. And that's, I mean, that's going to be true for all of us to some degree, but for water signs, it's particularly important that they work on that because your experience is only your experience and it's not, you can't project past experiences or relationships onto your current one. It's not fair to that person. If you had a father who abandoned you when, when he was five years old, when, when he was five years old, when you were five years old, and you always have had this animosity uh, towards men because you think that they're all going, you know, that they would do that. To, and that is an egregious violation to a, uh, a cancer, to abandonment is probably one of the worst things. Uh, that a, a parent can do to a cancer person because they really require a lot of nurturing. You know, cancers are very sensitive souls. So um, unconsciously, you may project animosity towards all men, um, not really realizing that you're doing so. And you have to heal that. Nobody can do that for you. And the, and the other person, it's unfair to them because they have to prove that they're not going to do what your father did. And that's just not fair. Um, no one should have to go through any ch tests or anything like that to be in a relationship with you. So um, this comes from speaking your truth, becoming more detached. You can do that through meditation where you take... Cause there's, Really, when you're not detached, it's really the ego that has taken over the person. I'm, I'm talking about the unhealthy ego. There's a healthy ego that is your sense of self and your sense of worth. And 
um, being proud of your talents and accomplishments. There's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with being proud of what you have done. Where it veers into narcissism, unhealthy ego, is when the person really has a deep sense of self-hatred and shame. And on the surface, they, they've been trying to, you know, um, be successful in the world, and maybe they've gotten there, but they, there's a disconnect between their deepest parts of themselves and these outer achievements. So they overemphasize their achievements and act arrogantly, self-absorbed, and that kind of thing. So um, learning not to be demanding of other people's affection of accepting what people can give you. Some people are not going to love you in the way that you that you want to be loved, but they do care. And if you accuse people of not caring enough, you'll drive them away. That's the point too. So it's really about detachment, mental detachment. Um, okay, so these are kind of fun because sometimes some of these can be a little bit heavy. Um, this is the who, what, when, where where you might meet them. Uh, one card I got for you is the world, and so you might meet them on travels, on, on long-distance travels. Uh, let me see. Your, your ninth house is Pisces, which is the house of long-distance travel. So um, there is a, there's a new moon in Pisces happening March 17th, so that might be a time when you're when you're actually taking some kind of a trip and maybe you meet somebody there and um, The world card is also the last card of the major arcana, so it could be wrapping things up um, Maybe there are still some things that You need to um, Deal with before you can move into the dating scene again um, maybe you have a child who is going to graduate high school this June and you have been single for years and you don't want to date until they graduate high school because this is a card of graduation too. So there could be, um, maybe you're in college and you don't want to start something with somebody now because you know that you're all going to split up. So it could be that there's something that you need to finalize before you're really going to feel comfortable getting back into the swing of things dating-wise. Um, the other thing I got for this is the Daughter of Swords. So this is like the Page of Swords. Um, I would even say like internet activity for you that you might find somebody online because this could be um, a new contact through the internet. Swords connect with air energy, including Gemini, which is the ruler of the third house of internet, but also the 11th house is Aquarius, and that's internet too, and that's a, uh, swords. So it could be something along those lines. Um, maybe it's a, a person who has air energy. With uh, Cancer, I could always see like a Libra. And the other air signs are Gemini, which is a sign adjacent to you, and Aquarius. So... Um, that's that. <laughs> and um, I did pick an extra card for the outcome because Five of Swords, the outcome is of the Five of Swords is talking about um, a one possible interpretation is empty victory. So one thing for those people, this may be very specific to certain people who may be attracted to somebody who is married, okay? Uh, or otherwise in a committed relationship. Be very careful about, and you might know that this person really has a thing for you, but you haven't initiated it yet. Be very careful about that because you might get the person, but you lose the, the battle, the war of morality. And the reason I say that is because even if the onus or the burden falls on the person who's actually in the relationship, I don't think that anyone who participates in an extramarital affair can, you know, emerges with clean hands. Just by the golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated. Even if you don't know this third party, 
And even if this person tells you that, oh, she doesn't treat me well, she's abusive, I'm just with her because we are raising children, all of those things, I wouldn't trust anybody who badmouths the person that they're with. Um, I've really become very strict about that because I know they could do the same to me. And I am looking at the bigger picture. Do I want to be the type of person who gets cheated on? No. Well, then how do I feel that it's right to do that to somebody else if I'm knowingly involved? Now, sometimes what will happen is they will not tell you that they are involved. So if that happens, if you start dating somebody and then they tell you or you find out, that's even worse, you find out some way other than them that they are with someone, then you know that they're dishonest. <laughs> they, they didn't disclose that to you. So that's in and of itself a reason to be very um, wary of that person. So I just wanted to put that out there. But I did pick another card because that's not a card that I, I think of as completion. Um, another thing too is watch out. There could be people around you who are pretending to be friends or uh, what have you and they're really slandering you. Um, maybe they're poisoning the well. Like, let's say you have a circle of friends. I would say this would be, especially if you're in your 20s, because I can't imagine someone more mature doing this. Um, it That would be very sad. But I give people a pass when they're in their 20s because they're, they're just starting out as an adult. And, the, you know, you still retain some of those childish traits sometimes. And But when people are in, are in like, the social circle and someone says... So like, let's say you, let's say you're a woman, you have girlfriends and you're all part of the same circle and you're with this guy and they're jealous because they're, they can't find a person. So they start saying things behind your back to try to discourage that person from being with you. So just watch out for that. Um, if you know that you're with people that have the potential to do that, then I would ask you why you're with those people. Um, but then I also got the Mother of Pentacles, which is like the Queen of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles, it's funny, that's a card of the home. I would totally associate it with you, Cancer, even though Pentacles relate to Earth energy. <clears throat> it's, like a, it's like a situation of somebody who has a very comfortable home life, okay? And that means even material comforts because of the Pentacles Association. So, um, in a, like, because it's with the Five of Swords, again, it's a card of, like, respecting uh, the home, other people's home as well, even if you don't know the people within that home. Um, you know that they exist, that they're human beings. So talking about um, temptations to be with somebody who's already attached to somebody else, um, resisting those temptations. Also, um, remembering that you are a mother, if you are a mother, of course, and any relationship that you get involved with, um, if your child is not of legal age, of making sure that your child is protected, that you're not just worried about your own emotional needs and that you allow your child, uh, their well-being to come into to your um, discrimination process of whether or not you're going to be with a certain person. But I think the mother, the mother of Pentacles is a great card in general just for letting you know that you have a great life right now. So make, make sure that the person that you bring into it is someone that enhances your life. This could be an earth sign person. Even if we're talking about a male and, and you're interested in, in attracting a male, the mother of pentacles could be this person and they may have a lot of domestic uh, tendencies and that would be perfect for cancer. So if it's a man, he may like to cook. He may like to nurture you, mother you, 
and you know is a very caring person so we're talking about um, Taurus Virgo or Capricorn maybe they have some cancer moon or rising sign who knows that kind of balances out that earth and makes them more sensitive okay cancer that's what I have for you if you'd like a private reading please click on the link below my website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Um, have a great February. Take care. Bye.